Wow, guys, there's so much going on in Cameraland these days, it's insane. But it's also difficult to keep up sometimes. And so that's why today I also want your opinion. But wait, before you drop a comment, hear me out first, okay? Watch the video first and then drop a comment because I know that some of you are probably already itching to write a hefty comment just after reading the title of this video. So watch the video first and then spew whatever it is you wanna spew. At the end of the video, it's okay. Yeah, it's one of those videos, so buckle up. Okay, so a long time ago, I made this video. Is full frame better than APS-C? Here's the annoying truth. And that was quite a controversial video, as you'll see if you check the comments on that video. Wow, and I've deleted the worst ones. But you know, actually, that's why I love making videos like this, to stir things up a bit. Yeah, sorry, not sorry. But anyway, so the conclusion of that video was, or my conclusion at least was, that you can't just say full frame is better than APS-C or a small sensor, period. No, it doesn't work like that. It depends on so many different factors and also on the specifications that you need. Do you want an absolute low light beast? Well, then full frame is probably the better option. But what if having a small and light setup is more important to you? Well, then APS-C is probably the better choice. See what I mean? Or maybe even a point and shoot camera or your phone. What you use to tell the story is not that important. Just tell the story. And maybe most importantly, I'm also still convinced that 95 or maybe even 99% of camera users, photographers, videographers, don't need an expensive full frame camera. They can do whatever they wanna do with a decent APS-C camera. Now, that doesn't mean that those 95 or 99% of people don't want an expensive full frame camera. There's a big difference between wanting and needing, right? So, you know, you just have to find the right tool for the job and the right tool for you. Whether that's an APS-C camera or a full frame camera, doesn't matter. That's the best camera for you. So yeah, in short, conclusion back then, APS-C cameras, small sensor cameras are alive and kicking. But now, maybe I should say we're alive and kicking? Because, you see, the thing is, camera manufacturers and camera brands don't listen to what I say. They don't care about my opinion. Yeah, I know, how rude, right? They're not watching my videos. Um, but anyway, so the thing is, I'm noticing a shift lately. I'm noticing a shift towards full frame, a push towards full frame, and mainly in the video side of camera land. That's over there, apparently. So mirrorless cameras and cinema cameras, because in the photography side of camera land, which is over there then, I guess, uh, it's been happening for years, right? I mean, we all know that brands are pumping more money in the development of full frame cameras than small sensor cameras. The thing is, in video land, over there, well, Super 35 was the preferred format and all the money went to Super 35, or most of the money at least. And I know that Super 35 is not exactly the same as APS-C, but I mean, it's almost the same, right? Super 35 is like the, the, the video equivalent of APS-C, something like that, simply put. But anyway, so yeah, now we have all these insane Super 35 cameras with insane dynamic range and well, insane prices also, but hey, technology is expensive, right? We're talking about tens of thousands of dollars. But yeah, those cameras are incredible. And they all have that small Super 35 sensor, which is comparable to APS-C. But lately, in the last five, maybe 10, five to 10 years, there's this shift towards full frame. Manufacturers are heavily shifting towards full frame. It used to be all Super 35, but now, Ari Alexa, for example, they've been releasing more and more full frame cameras and even bigger with the Alexa 65 and the new Sony Burrito 8K full frame, but also cheaper cinema cameras like the new Blackmagic camera 6K full frame. And that's maybe also a reason why we see that shift towards full frame, the, the 8K, 6K, 12K, because a larger sensor surface means that you don't have to cram all those megapixels together in a small space and you'll get better image quality, probably. It's easier to get better image quality, I guess. I don't know, I'm deviating. But it looks like video is going the same way as photography, more and more megapixels. Now, those full frame cinema cameras were first being used in the big Hollywood productions, you know, the ones with the most money because those cameras were super, super expensive. But now I'm also seeing smaller productions using full frame cinema cameras. So it seems like the technology, the cameras are getting cheaper. And I mean, that makes sense, right? Now, this is what it says on Ari's website. Here, take a look. Will everything switch to large format now? 
It's a question. We at Ari believe that for the foreseeable future, the 65 format, the large format and the Super 35 format will peacefully coexist and blah, 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 blah. Just pause the video if you want to read the rest. So that's a frequently asked question. It seems like more people are worried about what I'm worried about. I mean, I'm not really worried about it, but you know, I want to stir things up a bit, remember? But we'll see what happens. I mean, Ari says no, we'll see. But the thing is, we're seeing the same now in the consumer and prosumer market. Insane full frame quality for lower prices. Take the FX3 for example, the Sony FX3. That new movie, The Creator, was shot on the FX3. That's incredible. And I saw a little clip, uh, a little interview with the director, and he says he loves the FX3 because it's small, he can put it on a gimbal, and it's a low light beast. You can basically shoot in moonlight without any additional lighting. And yeah, it's true. That's the kind of gear we can all buy now. Insane gear. And it's accessible to pros and amateurs. And that new Blackmagic camera 6K, by the way, is even cheaper. And you know what? I'll be testing it in a few weeks. So stay tuned. I can't wait. Raw video? Yeah. But anyway, guys, conclusion. If the cost of producing full frame cameras is going down and Hollywood movies are being shot on cameras like the Sony FX3, a camera that well, probably a lot of you have that camera. And if brands are shifting so heavily towards full frame, and if eventually all photographers and all videographers can have an insane, incredible full frame camera for the price of what an APS-C camera costs now, then aren't small sensors gonna be dead in a few years? I mean, I don't know, you tell me. To me, it feels like it right now because everyone is going full frame. So, I mean, guys, let me know in the comments because starting to freak out here. <laughs> Such exciting times to be alive as a filmmaker or a content creator or a photographer. It's, it's crazy, it's absolutely insane. So what do you think guys? Let me know in the comments because I'm 100% sure that some of you don't like this evolution. Some of you are Super 35 or APS-C fans or what's that other thing? Micro Four Thirds. I forgot you guys, I'm sorry. But anyway, drop your opinion in the comments. Let me know what you think, but as always, Keep it respectful. I am God here on my channel and I won't hesitate to strike down any comments that's hateful or disrespectful. So yeah, okay, salut.